Yeah, uh, you've seen a lot of improvement from the beginning of the year till uh, the last four or five weeks. You know, Coach Odom does a really good job. He's um, this will be the third year in a row we faced him. Um, my first year he was calling the defense. He was a coordinator, and then last year he called the defenses, and then this year and and just, he's got a great reputation, and uh, he does a really good job with his blitz package and uh, getting those guys to play extremely hard and. Um, uh, defensive lines just continue to improve every week, and uh, the backers are playing solid, and um, they're, they're a good group, well coached. Well, you know, you can't, um, you know, go out and just say you're going to block a guy. You got to block the structure. They have a lot of different structures, so uh, I think what they do is uh, um, they put pressure on you as far as uh, you know. Um, the, sc- the scheme, you know, and I think that's how they create their TFLs. I think that's one thing that's so unique about them is that um, the guys play the defense. Uh, it's a team defense. The guys are getting in their gaps. Guys are getting in the right spots, and that's creating a lot of the plays for just a, for not just one guy, but for a lot of guys because they're playing t- good team defense. Well, yeah, if it gets going like that in the game, it certainly does. You know, you don't want to um, you don't want to waste any possessions against the, against a team like that. And I think one of the big things we can do to help our defense and help our team is to get first downs and stay on the field and control the clock and try to limit their possessions and limit their time out there. So I do think that'll be a real key to the game from from what I understand. They're they're very explosive on offense and I know their quarterbacks playing at a very high level. Um you know, tough to say. I, I, I'm trying to think back to the LSU game. Um, you know, he, you know, again, he, he's, he's doing what he can. Um, but we just, you know, we didn't make enough plays in the past game this week, or we didn't make enough explosive plays. Period. This game, um, to, to to help our team win. You know, um, case in point, we have a pass play where two defensive backs fall on the ground, which I don't think I've ever seen that. They didn't run into each other. They just both fell over, and we only gained 24 yards. <laughs> it should have been, should have been a touchdown, you know, 70-yard touchdown or whatever it was. So um, we got to create explosive plays somehow. We, we had opportunities against Saturday, and um, we didn't capitalize on them. And uh, it's not just Austin. It's a, it's a lot of different factors um, involved. But uh, um, you know, when you have a game like that against such a such a good, uh, such a good defense. We had a chance to get explosive plays too. When you watch the tape, there's just there's guys open. There's um, things things to be had, and um, we're a protection away or a throw away or uh, whatever that is from making those plays. What's that? I don't. I don't know. I, I wish he would have stayed on his feet and ran the end zone, um, but it's. You know, I don't know what. I don't know. I, I can't answer that for him. I just. I just know that um, when you win football games, you you capitalize on those moments, and uh, we did not do that. Oh, you know. Well, it's. It's pretty decimated now. I mean, a lot of the guys are out, or we didn't have a lot to begin with. I think David Williams, who's a who's a graduate transfer, um, I really appreciate what he's done. He's coming and had a good, really good, solid year for us. He's, he's a good young man. Um, he's been fun to coach. Uh, obviously, Austin um, has been we've just been through a lot this year. Uh, just, I really feel bad for him. He's uh, really invested into this this program and and this team, and it hasn't hasn't. Uh, been the type of year I know he wanted to have, or did, nor did we want to have for him. So um, I hope I hope he can play well. I hope he can win and win his last game. I hope he can win his last game at home. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna certainly do everything we can to try to put him in that position as a coaching staff. And um, just it would be it would be really nice to see him just play a great game and uh, and he can get on to bigger and better things in his life. Not for not for uh, motivation. We look at it for schematically. You know, I mean, that's that's that game is, is what it is. I mean, they're all all the games are different, but schematically, we look back at it. We've watched it a couple times. Uh, it's in all of our cut ups, and there's certainly things that we can learn and take from that. Uh, Brett said that Cole Kelly was back in good standing in the program. Just, is there any plan that could he play Saturday? Or what do you 
You know, I, that's that's really up to Coach Bielema. You know, so uh, I think as we get, get get to unfold through the week and um, see how Cole practices and things like that, I think Coach will have a have a good idea on that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that up to Coach. Well, I hope so. I mean, if he doesn't, then uh, he's not as bright as I as I thought he was. It's a um, huge, huge mistake, uh, disappointment, and uh, uh, certainly just something that he's going to need to grow from if he wants to uh, um, turn into the player that I think in, that I think he wants to be. You know, I, I've been only been around him uh, just for a short time yesterday, to be honest with you, and and I, I think yeah, I think he's. I think he's, a, he's got a good heart. Yeah, I know he's, I certainly know he has a really good family, and he's uh, been been raised the right way. And um, he's a good. I think he's. I think he's a good kid with a good heart. And I think he's a young kid that made a big, big, big mistake. And I know certainly all of us in this room have made mistakes as well. So um, hopefully it's something he can learn from and um, not repeat it. <laughs> I don't know if you got any ideas. Let us know. Um, it's it's been difficult, you know. Uh, guys hurt. Moving to our third center. Um, Dylan Hayes plays for the first time. You know, it's just uh, uh, it's been difficult. We just we're just trying to trying to get him reps. You know, you the problem is during the week is you can't you try to anticipate. Well, if this guy goes down, you get guys reps with the twos, and but you can't um, you can't cover every scenario for every situation and. You know, we're just getting low on bodies. I think we only traveled nine linemen uh, Saturday, and we got two of them hurt, so we were down to seven. Um, so I was hoping no more would get hurt. I thought they might put me in at center or guard. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. I wouldn't hold up a long, very long in there. Um, but uh, Kurt will do a good job of getting those guys, is getting reps in different places. And um, the, the, the unique thing is that I don't think I've ever been in a season where you've had all these centers hurt. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's not just a guard or whatever. It's uh, uh, your center, so we'll have to continue to get another center ready, probably two more centers ready as well. So that'll take some time and some preparation this week. You know, uh, I think Brandon Martin, uh, hopefully we can get Devion Warren back um, from his injury. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of who else there is. Who else? Gary Cross. Uh, well, Jordan will, will certainly play, play, continue to play a bunch. But I think Gary Cross and Brandon Martin will be the guys, and then hopefully we can get Debian back. I think Debian was is starting to do some good things. I think he's a good football player with a bright future. Well, we teach a lot of them how to snap, but Dylan Hayes will be a guy um, that'll have to um, snap, and uh, obviously Jake and uh, um, Yelda. If we can get Yelda back. Um, he can snap some, and then um, I'm trying to think of one of those tackles we had snap. Johnny Gibson, I think, is the other guy we had snap a little bit too. So, what kept Jalen Merrick from getting on the field? Um, just his, you know, practice habits. I mean, he might play this week, you know, and you know, if he can have a good week of practice, and um, he's just it's been really been really inconsistent in practice with the uh, um, with the playbook and with uh, uh, the strain and. Uh, uh, you know, we—that's all we can base our, our decisions on—is how they perform in practice. You know, so um, he can—he'll do things here and there to get you excited, and then he does things um, to unexcite you, if you will. If that's a word. Um, but he—he uh, uh, he may get an opportunity this week. So hopefully, you know, hopefully he can have a really, really good week of practice. Everybody feels good about putting him in the game. You know, he didn't. He, he he did an admirable job for a guy that's played his first time. You know, he made some big mistakes in there. You know, uh, again, and he, he he was he got over overmatched in there a little bit. Um, but when you go back and you look at it and you think you think this was the first football he's ever played here, and he was a defensive lineman three weeks ago, um, he did an admirable job. He's a tenacious guy. He's a tough guy. Um, I think he'll be a good player here before it's all said and done. But uh, you know, it was tough, tough sledding in there for him on uh, Saturday. Is 
you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure about his situation. No, that's okay. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I don't, you know, it was um, not very good. Uh, I guess it was not very good technique used, and it uh, wasn't how we had practiced it for the last month, <laughs> you know. So it was just, uh, it was one of those things, you know. But when, you, when you've played competitive athletics and you've coached it, you know, there's a the term I always use with the quarterbacks. You know, you can live in your hopes or you can live in your fears. And we try to live in our hopes and we try to win games. And, um, you know, we had a play ready to go and guys didn't execute it. And sometimes that happens and sometimes you do it. But, um, you know, in hindsight, we'd do it all over again. Yeah, it was uh, kind of a uh, the perfect storm in a negative way for us because we started calling the play immediately and before we knew anybody was hurt, and then we, we had they were all lined up, and um, you know we got it substituted quickly, um, you know, uh, which was good. And, and again, we've we've repped this play for a long time, not just for a week, and all the guys have had reps at it. We've repped all the all the flankers um, at that play, and um, you know. Obviously, uh, state overstate the obvious didn't do a very good job and wasn't successful. There's a lot of speculation about what's going on with the staff. How are you guys handling that? Deal with that? It's not fun. It's not good. You know, it's hard. It's harder on the families than it is us. You know, we we get isolated and we're in here working and coaching and um, you know doing our deal. I think it's it, you know it's it's really really difficult on the on the kids and the wives. Um, you know, because they're out in the community and. Uh, kids hear things at school and things like that, and it's it's a really tough part of the business. It really is, and I I know people say, well, you decided to be a coach, you knew what you're getting into, and all. Yeah, you know that's true, but you know what, my my wife and kids don't deserve that, and uh, neither do all the other coaches, and so that's what makes really uh, it's hard. It's hard on us because of that. You know, again, you know we can take it, we can handle it. Obviously, when you're um, when you're four and seven, we don't, we don't, we know people aren't going to be running around trying to have a parade for us or build statues of us out in front of the stadium. We get, we get all that, but um, it's tough to watch your family go through stuff. But uh, you know, I, I just use it as a uh, continually use it as learning moments for my children. Um, is that you know, life's not always easy, life's not always fair, and there's going to be adversity in life, and you got to fight through it, and you got to, you know, as my dad used to always say, you got to. Keep your hands up, keep your chin down, and just keep punching, man. And um, and that's that's kind of what the Enos family we use our motto growing up, and we always use, and that's what we're always going to do. But I, I just try to use um, moments like this as a, a learning experience for for my kids and for and for my family, and and I know the other coaches do as well. Is that you got to handle these tough situations and keep moving forward, and um, you know God's got a plan for all of us, and uh, right now His plans for us to be four and seven. Hopefully, it's five and seven. At the end of this week, and then uh, we'll see what happens from there, and we'll we'll, we'll be better and stronger for it. You know, uh, they're both old enough now, uh, where uh, you know they. I don't say they kind of expected it, but I think they they knew that somebody might say something. You know what I mean? And they they, you know, one of them has said that people at school have said things, but. Um, you know, but yeah, we, my wife does a great job of uh, prepping them, if you will, and coaching them up, you know, and just, hey, you know, try to give people grace and, you know, and try not to fly off the handle. And that's what I would, the only thing I worry about is, you know, is when people say stuff is, you know, your kids love, they love their dad. You know what I mean? I mean, love them. And uh, they don't want anybody hurting them or saying anything negative about them. You know what I mean? So I just worry more about that of them just, hey, just, you know, water off a duck's back and let it roll. And, um, you know, God's out in f front of us always, and he's, he's uh, fighting our fights for us, and he's making our uh, crooked paths straight. And uh, there's a reason for everything. And just like I said, just keep your hands up and keep your chin down and just keep punching. Brett, last one. How the statistics for the young players? Uh, talking, you know, about where the program is headed. So what are your thoughts about the offensive talent that Arkansas has for next season? Um, I feel good about it. I, I feel really good about the quarterback 
situation. Uh, first and foremost, I think Ty's story has continued to get better. His, uh, his throwing mechanics have improved tremendously. He's like a different guy throwing. Uh, Cole Kelly certainly has shown, I think, glimpses of the, uh, uh, that he could be a really good player. Dalton Hyatt uh, continues to impress our coaching staff. Tremendous athlete, great size, arm strength. Um, you know, and then uh, as recruiting goes, you know, you can't comment on those things. But um, Jack Lindsay and Carson Proctor are good. All the tight ends are back. You know, obviously you lose Frank, but we haven't played with Frank for a while now. Uh, I think the future is getting brighter in that position. Uh, running back position is obviously very bright. And all the receivers are returning. And I think if you, Jay Red comes back as well, um, they, they, they'll even be better. Um, so I think, the, the, again, the future is very bright. I think is, there's a, there should be a lot of optimism for that group. Um, Got to continue to get better in the offensive line. Uh, continuity, consistency, uh, keep developing it, keep uh, recruiting it, and so that you you're constantly have older guys playing and younger guys you're developing to move into those, into those situations. So um, would like to see one of the wideouts emerge as a guy, you know what I mean? And I think Deion Stewart's had an opportunity here the last few weeks um, to, to create that buzz. We've missed him on some throws, you know. Um, he catches one and falls down, you know what I mean? I, I, but I do think there's, I think him and Jordan uh, have, the, have the potential to be really, really good players. And uh, I think those tight ends continue to, to tease you, you know, here and there. They tease you, but um, I think they need, uh, one of those guys needs to become a bell cow and be able to say, you can count on me every snap, run and pass game. And, and um, th they're certainly uh, talented enough to do it, but they got to put it all together. I mean, you know, talent and, and uh, 250 gets you a cup of coffee, right? You got to you got to put it all together, and uh, it's got to be the mindset, the toughness, the strain, the preparation, and uh, I think some of the guys got to continue to grow and mature in those areas and uh, off the field, and that will certainly help them become better players on the field. Right, thanks, Thank you.